Last year, we had an opportunity that bubbled up when a neighborhood uh, grocery store close to our hillside store closed. We've been located in that neighborhood for years and years and years, and we've always had a commitment to the hillside neighborhood. So when a neighborhood grocer a few blocks away closed, we were really surprised when we heard the message in the community, which was, there's no longer a place to shop in the hillside neighborhood. And that was um, a hard message for us to hear. Why is it that we, who have been in the community for over 45 years, aren't seen as a place for groceries? So um, that situation presented what I initially thought was an opportunity to really reach out to the community to grow sales. And what I've come to realize is it has created instead an opportunity for us to develop meaningful relationships that are continuing to unfold and continuing to, to play out in our community. So it started with listening sessions. There was a neighborhood meeting that was put together. The co-op was asked to cater the event. We provided a bunch of food. And I sat and I listened to the community talk about what the loss of the 4th Street Market meant to them. And it was hard to really listen, to hear that there was no other grocery store. There was no other place where people were treated well and got the service that they needed, where there were connections that were made, where there was a community feel. Because at our store, we've done so much to, to foster that. But we've done that to foster it. We've, we've created community that wasn't seen as an inclusive community. We have the everyone welcome sign across the, our store. And what I heard was, that co-op, that's not for me. I don't drive a Subaru. I don't care about organic kale. I just want to feed my family. I need a place where I can just sit and have a cup of coffee. I need a place where I can connect with my neighbors. And so we listened. And you know, other um, critiques were, the co-op is expensive. The co-op doesn't uh, take EBT. I, can only, I have WIC vouchers. I need to use the WIC vouchers. We have all of these things, but our neighbors didn't know that we had them. And so we listened and listened. And listen some more. Um, and then I had an opportunity to just very openly share, well, we actually have some of these things that it sounds like you're looking for. And people were blown away to know that the co-op has WIC, EBT, you know, all these things that, that we have developed over the years to, to support our community. But just us having that was nowhere near enough. And so what we started to do, and we had the opportunity, and we met uh, various organizations through this, this, these listening sessions and subsequent conversations, we were able to uh, increase relationships around, um, well, we, we fostered a relationship with our county social workers who worked in the community schools, um, who supported the families in need, who were promoting WIC and EBT and um, other food access uh, programs in the community. And so we were able to bring those uh, social workers into our store, just invite them over for lunch, have them table in our store to share uh, opportunities and um, connections. We went out into the community and we um, catered events. We provided um, games for kids at, at schools. We connected with a group who runs a, a canvas. So it's a neighborhood canvas that happens every year where they go out and they door knock and they ask about food insecurity. And the questions that they ask were really geared towards um, what can we do to develop a, a strong food system in our neighborhoods. And we ended up working with them to develop questions about the co-op's offerings and we um, wanted to know, do any of you consider the co-op a place to shop? 
Do you know that they have these programs? Do you know that we have co-op basics, et cetera, et cetera? It also allowed us to develop a relationship with an emerging farmer's market. Uh, the farmer's market was funded in part by the Junior League, and the Junior League wanted to provide free pantry items to shoppers that were participating in a matching food bucks uh, program. And so the Junior League ended up purchasing pantry items, field day pantry items from our co-op at cost, and then they distributed that at the farmer's market along with coupons and an invitation to come shop in our stores. We learned that word of mouth is the biggest thing in this particular neighborhood. And if there are any opportunities, it's not the story that we tell about ourselves, it's the story that our neighbors are telling about us that really make a difference. And so we started making connections with individuals and asking them, you know, we're hiring. We would love to hire from the neighborhood, but every time we post jobs, we never get applicants from the neighborhood. Why is that? What can we do to help get the word out that the co-op is a good place to work and that the co-op would love to employ folks from the neighborhood? And in that, we developed a list. We have an email list now of, of people who are connected in the community who hear about our job postings. They get that word out. And the percentage of employees that um, identify as minority increased from 6.3% to 11% over the course of a year. And I think part of that really is because of this word of mouth and because of these connections that we have been able to make through this, the closure of this market. And there is still so much work to be done. There are lots of opportunities for us to continue to, to foster. And in order for us to truly be transformative, we really need capacity. So anything that we can do to continue to have this, um, this message of inclusion, this message of the importance of these relationships um, within our staff, within our board, within our owners, is really going to benefit us. Um, but we have to really focus on putting capacity into building these relationships, putting investment into the time that it takes to build these relationships.